Hey everybody, how is it going? Now recently I was set a challenge by the nice people at Kamut to create a collection, a collection of explore local rides, meaning don't stray too far away from home and ride as many new roads as possible. The original plan was to try and do three rides, but I've included a bonus fourth personally, purely because I wanted to share that ride with you. I honestly believe that ride has got some of the best roads in the Cotswolds in, and if I hadn't chosen it, I would have been doing myself and you a disservice. So I took Kamut up on their challenge. I sat down behind my laptop for a couple of hours and planned what I believe to be the most amazing rides in the local area. It took me that long to plan because I wanted to be really careful with all the details, scan all of the surface types, all of the way types, make sure I was planning a purely road bike adventure, and then check the forecast as well, which meant that I had to wait for a few days to find a good window of weather. But I'm so pleased I did because I think when you see the footage, you'll agree, it was absolutely beautiful and I managed to find some really amazing routes. So here we go, let's get stuck straight in to day one. Ride number one in my four day ultimate tour of the Cotswolds. Press the start button, scroll down to the Commute app, evening spin from Tetbury. That one's already downloaded, it means I can use it offline. Press start, Choose the bike app, because I'm getting on the road, and off we go. Starting point for all of these rides, the town square in Tetbury. Pretty nice, pretty busy on a Thursday evening. In one car, that's how busy it gets. Here's Cherrington, the first village on the route. Once you leave Tetbury anyway. And lovely quiet little village. Some of the best roads leave here. So I'm quite looking forward to that in the setting sun. It's gonna be really beautiful. So I've chosen a nice short and relatively easy ride for day one because I feel I want to kind of emulate the feeling that I would get if I was doing a pre-race ride. So plenty of scope for going easy or going hard, but also you could just enjoy the ride. You don't have to think too much. The terrain wasn't challenging. You could ease into the few days ahead, sort of like a leg loosener, getting ready for the next couple of rides. Too much. But so far it's working out really well. It's one of the hottest days of the year and it's a beautiful evening. Some, barely 12 kilometers away from my house. I cannot believe the amount of new roads that I've discovered already, having planned this route. And that's what's quite cool about this little mini adventure challenge as it were. Just going out and finding new places to ride and experiencing something new. What's funny is some of these roads have actually ridden in the other direction now, but they are so different when you ride them in the opposite direction, certainly when you've only done them once or twice. It's amazing. It's, it is genuinely a new adventure. Look at this, as we come around this corner now, straight into the beautiful evening sun. Hopefully the lenses are clean enough to see that. Part of the reason I chose Tetbury is just the magnitude of places you can stop and get something to eat or drink. And also there's loads of parking space as well if you are driving from outside of the town. So it gives you loads of options. And I think that's always quite good when you are having a ride. But I think this is the perfect way to start a long weekend or a nice four days of riding a bike. Back to where we started. All right, here we go. Day two, heading out to Tetbury for 84 flattish kilometers. So 52 and a half miles, roughly. We can head out down towards one of the most beautiful well, villages in the Cotswolds, I guess. Castle Coombe. With a bit of luck, it's not gonna to be too busy because of the whole coronavirus issue. The last time I was there, it was actually really quiet. So that was quite nice. And it makes it a beautiful place to go on a day like today. Should be a fairly easy ride. We've got a slight headwind on the way out. Now I haven't intended to do today as day two. It was gonna be day three, but I've decided partly because of the weather coming up, which I use the accurate forecast within the app to predict for myself, partly because of that, but also partly because I feel a little bit leggy and I just actually fancied mixing the rides up a bit. So we're gonna save the big day, the hilly day, the longest day for day four. So it'll be a back weighted weekend for myself. Anyway. So we've just come out of Tetbury into the first quiet lane. And we've got immaculate tarmac to kick off the ride. Beautiful sunshine. And I know that this first section, which generally speaking, I've only really ridden in the other direction, is just completely unspoilt. 
beautiful villages, twisty lanes, narrow lanes. So expect to see loads of horse riders, loads of other cyclists. It's just a nice place to ride a bike. The route's all loaded into the Garmin again. picked up an almighty tailwind right now. Justin, I'm about to overtake the steam engine. I'm obviously steaming along. It's pretty cool. Check this out. I can't guarantee that's going to be there when you come along here. But judging by the speed it's going, it could well be. So on this tiny little nondescript lane, we're about to cross the Foss Way. And this is in fact the Foss Gate. Now, I'm going to kick myself if I get this wrong, but I'm pretty sure Foss Way runs all the way from Exeter to Lincoln. Okay, so this little stretch of road is easily one of my highlights for the day. It's, I'm not going to guess what it's called, I'll just link to the highlight afterwards. A bit gravelly, but it's the woods just before Castle Coombe. It's nice and cool in the summer, but it's just beautiful. I like riding in the woods. It's just a nice little area to ride. And then the descent in a second down into Castle Coombe is, is nice, it's flowing. Judging by the cars back there, it could be a little bit busier than it has been recently. But that's all right. Busy in this part of the world is not busy like in other parts. But I just love these steep valleys. That's what I like about the Cotswolds, quiet, steep valleys. Just unspoilt, beautiful here then. Castle Coombe. And yeah, definitely busier than it has been. But nothing compared to peak tourist season when it's heaving. Another little beautiful village. This is Gristleton, just off the Fosway now. We've done a loop down and back. And we're now heading sort of, sort of northeast, I suppose. Still riding that amazing tailwind. So all is good through the Ford. Splash. At this point, I really think it's worth mentioning that there is no way I would be using this product or promoting it here on the channel if I didn't genuinely believe there's something in it for you to benefit from as well. So personally, the big benefit for me was using someone else's highlight, something that someone else recommended visiting and including that on one of my routes. It just made it really easy to plan and link together different routes that I would personally never have considered. There are loads of users on Camus and because of that, the algorithms generate routes that they've suggested and that helps tailor the routes to yourselves. I've ended up linking different bits of different rides together and it's completely transformed my experience. Honestly, if I was to go somewhere new and I didn't know the area, I think this is the easiest way to plan a really nice ride. It's quick, easy, within a few minutes you can have planned the ride, downloaded it to your head unit or followed the instructions on your phone, the directions, it's literally that quick. For some reason it always appeals to me to stop there, even though I don't often stop in the middle of my rides but it's properly tucked away. You'd never even know it was here. It just looks nice to me. Assuming it's open. So we just popped through Malmesbury, which was well, as, as lovely as you can imagine. Loads of different places to stop. But look, the Wiltshire Cycleway. If I can find the gate, we can go through. Private cycle track. Very nice. For a little bit of added proof that I am sort of right about these rides being some of the most beautiful ones that I've ever done, Micah, my wife, went out this morning and she did 30 something K of yesterday's loop. So, what did I do? I did 46. She did around about two thirds of it and completely agreed, said it's one of the most enjoyable rides that she's done. Certainly the best roads in the area. So, don't just take it from me, take it from Micah as well. That was, uh, it was good because it's, you know, we're obviously rather different fitness levels. So for her to get back and say that she really enjoyed it was basically the, the validation that the ride needed. Look at these roads. It doesn't get any better than this to me. Just quiet and undisturbed and rolling and smooth. It's everything I want from riding a bike. This is it from day two, the absolute final stretch. And I love open roads like this. It's something I didn't have a tour growing up as a kid in Cornwall. So I think that's probably the reason I like it. It's a bit of a novelty. You can just see for miles in different places. If you like your big aeroplanes, Kemble Airfield is just over my right shoulder. 
it's worth a stop for some pictures if you like big machines other than that hopefully i've quite clearly depict depicted all of the highlights on this ride there's so many different places you can stop off enjoy a pat lunch today i have my jam sandwiches on the go which is quite nice i think sunday is probably the absolute ride the best ride for stops purely because of the choice just there is more choice certainly if you include a few deviations on the route and that's the beauty of all of these rides they're all going to be uploaded or created as round trips meaning that you can just quite easily change the start and stop point and tailor them to yourselves as well if you like why am i telling you all about this app well i'm going to set you a challenge now go to the app set up a free account where you can use the first region of maps for free as well and create your own collection and make sure you tag me in it as well so you can show it to me so you can show that you've created one and then maybe if you live not too far away if you live in the uk at some point when we're traveling around going to races maybe even in europe i can come and do your rides as well day three which is the shorter hillier day it was going to be my last day originally but i decided because of the weather as you can see it's wet i've waited all day partly for a little bit of company elliot say hello and um gonna go out and find the hills on the very western edge of the Cotswolds. I think it's gonna be a stretch to even say we're in the Cotswolds, but let's go and find out. So day three's hilly ride. The hills are yet to kick in. They're kind of weighted towards the back end so that get them all out of the way in one go. But look at the views, straight out over the seven and Elliot having his flapjack. So you can see the Black Mountains and I'm pretty sure you can see right across to the Malvern Beacon as well. There we go, the namesake of the most beautiful climb of the day, the Bear of Rodborough. So in the end that turned out to be really quite hilly. I expected it of course, I've seen the graph and I found the route, but it was good. Some really nice times, some of the best ones in the local area. Had a great, well, I don't know, I'm not really sure it is a leg stretch or a preparation ride for tomorrow. But tomorrow, the Queen stage, the one I'm looking forward to the most because it has some of my absolute favorite roads in the Cotswolds. And I just, I'm really quite pleased I get to share them with you, to be honest. I'm getting home for a refuel. I'll see you back here in the morning. All right, it's the final day of my ultimate tour of the Cotswolds. Today is my all-time favorite stage, because, or stage, ride through the Cotswolds. It's got some of the most beautiful tiny villages along the Colne River Valley. And we've got company as well. Well, you could probably see Ross from there. Ross is training for a big event in the summer. So he's tagged on a little bit beforehand and he's gonna do more afterwards. In keeping with my aviation theme from the other day, Fairford, and if you come every other year when the Royal Air Tattoo is on, it's unbelievable the sort of thing you'll see here. I'm not sure you can see that from the camera, but just believe me, it's there somewhere. Right, this is my absolute favourite point on the entire four days of riding because for some bizarre reason I love the post office here run by volunteers coffee cake and by the looks of it open to cyclists right now we're getting straight on today we're not stopping we're now rolling into Bybury which if you have a British passport possibly is photographed within the front cover the row of houses which you may or may not be able to see right now over to my left is it Arlington Row? Is it inside the British passports? Lovely village, nice choice of places to stop. Beautiful Cotswold stone houses. What more do you want from a Cotswold ride? Right, we've just climbed up towards Chedworth. Actually, Chedworth, just over a mile that way. And there's an amazing farm shop when it's open. This right here is part of the old runway from a World War II airfield. Back down there, or well, the climb we've just come up, it's pretty tough into this headwind. We're gonna go right now, we've got a beautiful little twisty twisty descent and then we turn left 
up a staged climb, it goes up in steps, and then probably my highlight of the entire day, a wooded valley alongside a lake. I think it's beautiful. You can't really see the lake because of the, the foliage in the summer, but in the winter, I'm sure it's stunning. One hundred and ten kilometers of my absolute favorite roads in the Cotswold. Hopefully, the pictures and the videos kind of depict just how beautiful it is. Hit and miss with the weather today. We had sixteen percent chance of rain based on the commute forecast. We got a tiny drizzle, so it's not too bad. Pretty happy with that. Go home now. Stick it all into my collection. Show it to you properly. For me personally, the thing that sets commute apart is just the fact that it breaks down every single surface type, every single way type, the fact that you can have a forecast as well, it just makes it really easy to plan, especially if your rides are gonna be lasting for more than one day. So go out there, create your own collection, tag me in them, share me in them, like I said before, and hopefully at some point I can get around to having a go at your rides as well. I'm gonna finish the video by saying an absolutely massive thank you to the people at Commute. It was a really cool challenge and it made for some of the best riding I've done in a very, very long time. So a huge thank you to you guys. It was also a huge motivator as well to get back on my bike. It's the first time I've done 300 kilometers in four days for quite some time and I really enjoyed it. That's it from me. I will see you all again very soon.